Hey there, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started flipping in old school RuneScape. We're going to start with a basic definition of what is flipping. It's simply buying an item for one price, for example, 10 gold, and then turn around and selling it for a higher price. That's your profit margin. So for example, if you sell that item that you bought for 10 gold for 20 gold, you just made 10 gold profit, the difference of what you bought and sold for. And once again, for example, if you bought a cannonball for 150 gold, and you turn around and sell it for 160 gold, you just had a 10 GP profit margin. Now, how the hell are you going to get rich with just a 10 gold profit margin? It's easy. If you make this 10 gold profit off of 10,000 cannonballs, so you buy 10,000 instead of just doing this for one cannonball, you'll make 100k gold. And as you can see right here, 10,000 flipped, 150, around 160, 101 profit. Now to pull this flipping off, you're going to need to be on Runelight and you're going to need to use the flipping utilities plugin. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I'll have my friend right here explain the plugin to you. Hey yo, what's up flipping gang? So a lot of you ask about the flipping plugin. So it is flipping utilities. It'll be right up here in the top right of your Runelight. If you don't have it, just click on the wrench, go to external plugins and you can find it there. I think it's already a part of it though. And from here, you have a couple tabs here. Slot shows you what your current GE offers are. Flipping, you can search items and it tells you the active prices that the item is going for. That way you don't have to actually check it yourself by buying it and then selling it right back. It tells you what the insta buy is and the insta sell is if you wanna to try to use those or undercut by one to make it maybe go by faster or overcut. And then lastly, it has stats where you can see all of your previous flips, everything you've done before. What's nice is once you keep flipping stuff, you keep building up a bigger resume of stuff so you know what your favorite flips are. Whew. I know that's a lot. Now let's backtrack and talk about your most two powerful tools as a flipper. The undercut and the overcut. So the Grand Exchange is a competitive marketplace where you're competing with everyone else in the world of old school RuneScape trying to sell their stuff too. So the undercut helps you sell your items by putting your item one GP less than whatever is currently going for on the market so that your sells first. And the overcut helps you buy items over other players by offering one extra gold than what everyone else is willing to pay for the item. All right, so let's see this in action. I'm gonna show you this with U logs. So right here, I have U logs. If you look over on my plugin on the right, you'll see that their instant sell is going for 277. This is what everyone else is selling them for. And this is where I want to overcut them. So instead of 277, I'm going to do 278. And then I'm going to buy all of these logs and we'll just wait till that finishes. And boom, there we go. Since I overcut my competition by offering one extra gold, all of mine went through. So now I can take these 12,000 logs and let's turn around and sell it. Now I'm going to show you the undercut. So we're looking at the plugin here. They actually went up. They're going for 287. So now I'm going to undercut that 287. It shows up right here for the insta buy. Boom. And I'm going to take it down to 286. And then we're just going to wait for all these to sell. And boom, as you can see right here, it took under two minutes to sell all of those. So now I'll take that. And then we have our money. Now there's a couple things we need to look at now. As you can see over on the flipping utilities plugin, we profited 72K. But really, we made 100k because we bought it for 3.336 mil and we turned around and sold it all for 3432 mil. But there is a tax when you use the Grand Exchange, which takes away 1%. So on the left here, this white number, you'll see how much we made. So, really quick, I'll explain how GE tax works. Actually, I'll be explaining that. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about what is GE tax. Well, they've added a 1% tax for all individual sales on the Great Exchange. However, any items sold under 100 GP when I have the tax applied capped at 5 mil per item. As you can see here, if you were to sell a item for 7,900 gold, it automatically calculates it right here, taking the minus 1% away and showing you what you would get if you sell the item for that much. So instead of 7,900, you'll get 7,821. As you can see here, it actually sold for 10,000 so subtract 1% and you 
you receive 9,900 GP. So you're probably wondering why they implemented this and how it affects you. But it's been added to create a healthier economy by removing gold out of the game. It's expected to remove around 10 to 15 trillion gold per year. And flipping is just as alive as it was before with the GE tax implemented. Simply the margins have increased to make up for the tax so you can still make big profits off any items you want. Just double check that you're actually profiting. So now you understand GE tax and we just made all that 76k. Now what stops me from just doing you logs again? I mean I had 76k there, why not do it again? Well, there is a trade limit, so I can only buy 12,000 logs every four hours. That's how the reset works. As you can see right here, G limits, for example, if I flip still bars, I can flip the buy limit of 10,000 that it shows right there. And then after I flip that 10,000, it goes on cooldown and you'll see in parentheses 359. That's just showing this four hours in game time until I can flip it again. This isn't a bad thing though, because then you don't just have one person controlling the entire market for an item. Now, you also have to remember the Grand Exchange is a competitive marketplace. So once you start to go flipping and you start doing these overcuts and undercuts and your item just sits there forever and nothing happens, you may have to try again because the price does move. The real time price goes up and down depending on what's going on in the market, how many people are flipping it, how many people are changing the price. So sometimes you do have to adapt and you'll have to redo the offer because the price will actually change and you'll have to undercut or overcut again. It's just about being flexible when you're flipping. Now risk. Generally, cheaper high trade volume items are going to be less risky and then lower trade volume, very expensive items are going to have a little bit more risk attached to them. Also, when you're flipping, use the plugin and hit that star beside items that work. So you logs, for example, I'll hit the star. That way, when I go and search for items, I can hit my favorites and it shows all my favorite items so I can easily get back to the items I know that work. Next up, I'm going to show you how to do some market analysis to find your own items to flip. And then right after, I'll show you 10 items you could flip with under 1 mil. Let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 items you can start flipping if you only have 1 mil to work with. I personally flipped all these items in a recent video I did where I started from 1 mil to see what I could do flipping wise. So first item is going to be Rune Arrows. Profitability is S tier. It's made me some of the most money out of all 10 of these items. And the trade volume is very high as it comes from a drop from many monsters in the game and it is traded a lot for pvp and people consuming the item it also has a very low risk in my opinion then moving on item two silver ore very profitable has a little bit lower trade volume in comparison to something like rune arrows and is pretty low risk moving on you have zora scales very profitable not quite S tier though in my opinion anymore after GE tax it is a little harder to flip Zora skills as you need a little bit extra of a margin usually before even if you get a one GP margin you could get 30k for each GP now you have to have a little bit more because of how tax works but super high trade volume limit as it is consumed by Zora weapons and it is has a ton being brought into the game by people killing Zora very low risk as it's such a cheap item. Moving on, cannonballs. I used to think cannonballs were S tier, but in my personal experience with the GE tags, kind of the same boat as Zora Scales. Um, still very profitable, and it has a lot of trade volume because so many people are making cannonballs and so many people are using cannonballs. I think it's pretty low risk as well. Item five is gonna be adamant bolts. I tried out these. I tried a lot of different bolts. Bolts are generally good flips, and these are very good if you only have a little bit of cash to work with. S tier, in my opinion, trade volume is amazing as people are making them, using them for enchanted bolts, and it's pretty low risk. Moving on to the one that made me the most money in my first episode of the flipping series, strawberries. I made about 2 mil flipping strawberries as I may have been the only one on the market flipping them. I think it is an S tier flip if you can find it at the right time like I did. And the trade volume isn't quite as good though as not that many people are consuming or buying strawberries i don't really know why people are buying them unless you're doing some really low level fire capes or just buying them for your garden plants 
but it is a pretty medium risk as if multiple people start doing this flip, it may not work for you. Moving on, item seven, grapes. Very profitable. It has a lot of trade volume as people use it to make wines and very low risk. Easy to get into since grapes are very, very cheap. Moving on to item eight is coal. S tier profitability. Um, I made a lot of money off this one. It was one of my top performers. It's high trade volume, so it's easy to do and it's low risk involved. Moving on to monkfish. Not very profitable, but it does work as a flip. It is profitable, just not as quite as much as some of these other performers. Um, has a decent trade volume though, because it is used as a consumable. Um, lots of PVPers, PVMers are using it and pretty low risk, though it does have a little bit more of a capital investment required. And my final item, sweet corn. This made me a good chunk of money too. It's very similar to how strawberry was. I think it's very profitable. It might be even better than strawberries. I didn't get to use it too much. Trade volume is in the same boat though. I don't think there's as many uses. Not sure why so many people are buying them other than just farming. And it has a little bit more risk involved. These are all 10 flips that I used from going one mil to five mil flipping and they all worked very well for me. Awesome, so now you have some insight on some items you could flip with just a very small cash stack. Now I'm gonna show you my favorite tool that I use to do market analysis, to find items to flip, or also some longer term items to merch and hang on to for longer than just a quick flip. What's up flippers? So today we're gonna to talk about how you can do some market analysis to see which items are worth investing in for flipping in the future. The only thing you need to do is go to Google and type in Grand Exchange OSRS. And then click this first link right here and it'll take you to the live grand exchange or srs website from here we can get any and all market analysis on any item we want the grand exchange website gives you a lot of information you can find the top 100 items that rise in price the most recently and the top 100 price falls most recently um usually i use this for finding the most traded items though as these are super high trade volume items are the most traded in the game and generally, these are easy to flip just because the sheer volume of these coming in and out of the economy. Now, the rest of this video is going to be talking more about how you can analyze some of the charts that you'll see on these items with their trade volumes over periods of time from one month to three months, six months. This can give you some more insight whether it's worth flipping this item or not. And today specifically, we're going to be talking and looking at items that have like dropped in value over the past couple of months. For example, let's go right here to Red Chinchampas and see what's going on. So it looks like they've been dipping the last month, but what I want you to really look at is the six month graph. So let's look at three months. All right. Looks like it just came up from a high. Now let's look at six months. This is what we really want to look at here. Now these may not be ready to invest in right now, but by looking at the graph, we can look here at the bottom here that they've shown that they drop as low as 700. And then they had a huge spike here up to 1300 and now they're down here at 800. So I would say if it does drop to 700 again, you could reliably expect them to at least go back up to 800 or 900 and make a big chunk of change. Like even if you just buy one buy limit for 7,000, and these go, you buy these at 700 and they rise back up to 900, which they seem to normally do, ignoring this 1300 spike, you'll, you could easily make 1.4 mil. And if it does manage to come up all the way up here, you're looking at a lot more money. Do 7,000, that's about 500 gold profit on each, 3.5 mil. Just note that the items in this video are mostly long-term investments. So let's look up some other items that may be viable we're really looking for items that are like traded a lot and have a high volume and that fluctuate a lot so right here at green dragon hide we can see they've spiked to almost 1700 and then they dip almost uh 1300 and they've been like sitting at 1300 for a while and they constantly go up so you could easily get a 200 gold margin on these I definitely recommend these. Let's go look at another item now. Let's do sharks, especially raw sharks. I think they're pretty low right now. 
So look at this six month graph. Look, they're dipping right now. All right, this kind of looks exactly like the Chinchampa one. So this is most likely due to like a big event. Um, it could be something to do with leagues. I haven't been on recently, recently, so I'm not sure. But look, they dip as low as 544. They kind of stay around 600. And they spike up to 1,000. The only problem with items like these when the graphs are like this, this is most definitely to do to some kind of event. And then they have a huge drop off but i mean it doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't try it but let's look at another item that is more recommendable like the green dragon hide that's what we're really looking for a graph like that see if i can think of other items let's go with fire or all right looks like they're staying at 188 right now all right this is pretty good this is pretty good right here so this definitely isn't just due to one big event. So it looks like they drop as low well as 1,050 gold, but it seems like, like it's pretty steady here too in this little area. Even if you got it down here, you could still get a hundred gold margin with just this little spike up here. But look at these big spikes. That's like 400 gold profit on each one. 800 gold, like this is definitely something if you can get it on one of these dips when it's lower like this and just hold on to them, you can make a lot of money from this. And as you can see down here, there's enough volume each day that you could like realistically buy these because they're traded so much because they're needed in crafting. Like, let's look at another item, air orbs. I know some people do air stabs. They're crafting levels. A dip. Almost same exact thing. So like you can invest in these too, 400, 500, almost 800, 1800, like that's, that's like 700 gold per item. So let's get the calculator out again. This is still on the most like extreme point of it though, but let's say we bought, let's like a buy order is 11K, but let's say we bought like 55,000 and we're making 700 gold per item. That's almost 40 mil. That's insane. And this is definitely realistic and like possible to pull off. Like if you had an extra 10 to 50 mil, you could invest in these items. Just leave that cash sitting there if you didn't need it. And then over a couple months, you could just double your cash stack. Purpose of this video isn't necessarily to tell you to go flip these items, but it's to give you an idea on how to look up your own items and be able to read these charts and get an idea of what's what has good potential and holding on to but for the sake now that you learned a little bit about market analysis and know how to use the grand exchange website as a tool there's two more things i want to go over in today's video one is going to be flipping niche items which can be pretty fun and then also a new method of flipping it's an alternative way that i found out a while ago that i think is pretty cool the purpose of this video isn't for you to go start flipping pineapples is to get creative with flipping niche items like have you ever been just seeing at the g and then it just pops in your head maybe i should be flipping pineapple rings right now uh so no just me all right well anyways pineapple rings are used for making pineapple pizzas which is used as a pretty good food source. So I figured, why not give it a try? And as you can see over here on the right, I went and took an item that probably no one else was even thinking about flipping because it does sound pretty dumb and like a useless item, but I went and checked out myself and I was even able to get the 10 to 20 gold margins. But when you're flipping 13,000 of an item, 10 to 20 gold can easily be 50 to 60K per flip. So since I had this item's market all to myself, I just kept flipping them over and over, because I had no competition. And as you can see over here on the right, 12,000 for 60k, 26,000 for 78k, 13k flip for 208,000, 13k flip for 91k, 7,000 flip for 154k, and then 6,000 flip for 140k, 13,000 flip for 195k, 13,000 more, 182k it's all added up to be 1.8 mil like seriously if you get an idea to flip something try it you never know what's gonna work here's some other examples of things i managed to flip during this video to just test for example red elegant shirts 250k 
I even flipped orange baskets of oranges. Like who does that? 250k. Jar of stone, 300k. I flipped flare trousers for half a mil. I even flipped bronze two-handers for around 60k. Like bronze two-handers, seriously. And then I even flipped regular logs for 130k profit. So really, anything's possible to flip if you just get creative and you just go try it yourself. There could be a margin. And the market could be all yours because no one else is thinking about flipping that item. And so the purpose of this video is to show you that yes, it is possible to flip weird and unpopular items. There you go, you can literally flip anything. You just gotta get creative. Now let's get into this last part where I show you this alternative way to flip. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a different method of flipping that I did not know about before that I implemented and I ended up making 50 mil in fire orbs and air orbs. Of course, the method I'm about to show you isn't only viable for those items, they're just items I use. You could use any items with this method. But let me go ahead and show you it. So I basically learned about the method from this Reddit post in 2007 escape. It's called Flipping with 100 plus mil for noobs. And first and foremost, I want to thank Reddit user SM1334 for making this Reddit post. He says, Alright, so I should preface by saying I'm no noob when it comes to flipping. I've been doing it for years and acquired tens of billions of GP, relatively easily. I'm going to teach you guys how to do it too. Once you understand the whole concept, literally anyone can make bank from this method. So first off, forget everything you already know about flipping. This method is the exact opposite of what you've been taught. What do I mean by that? Well, typically you want to increase your cash stack, but the better alternative is to decrease your cost basis on your items. Your cost basis is the average cost you paid for that item. Let me explain. So you have 10k GP and nothing else. You buy 1k pots for 10 GP each. Your cost basis is now 10 GP per pot. You sell 500 pots at 12 GP, then rebuy those 500 pots at 8 GP. You now have 1k pots, again plus 2k GP. Why is this better than the usual methods? Well, if you had sold all your pots, what if the price goes up even further, like 15 or 18 GP? You would have missed out on all that juicy profit. Let's start over. You have 1,000 pots at a cost basis of 10 gold. The price goes up to 8 gold. What do you do? Well, you find the margin. Let's say the margin is 7 to 9 gold. Then what you would do is sell 500 pots at 9 gold. Then rebuy 500 pots at as 7 gold. This will lower your cost basis to 9 gold per pot. You would just keep doing this until the price recovers. This part here is what's risky because the price could recover before you can buy the pots back. But that's just part of the game of, with flipping. Sometimes you lose money but nothing is stopping you from continuing to lower your cost basis irregardless of the lost profit. The purpose behind this method is you keep all your gold wrapped up in items rather than gold. So you never miss out when items go up and you're always taking advantage of the dips. This creates an opportunity to get 10 to 30% price swings and trust me, it happens. Let me run you through another example but with my actual transactions. This will be with the item shark and this took place over the last three weeks. The first transaction will be a little high but that's because I put a large buy order in to kind of get a baseline for the average price over a few days and the prices after taxes for simplicity. As you can see, I kept lowering my cost basis lower and lower and eventually I cashed it out for 36.5 mil profit in just three weeks. This is all while only spending a few minutes finding the margin and adjusting my cost basis in my notes. I didn't spend 10 to 20 minutes looking for new items. I was just flipping the items that already work. All right, so I know this is probably super confusing. Trust me, it was confusing for me too, but I'm about to show you how I used it to make 50 mil for myself. So in simpler terms, basically we're buying a large quantity of items that we're going to continuously flip when we find profit margins, but when we buy more, we're not going to sell it all back. We're gonna sell like half of it, and then we're gonna keep buying on those margins. And as the price of that item goes up, you naturally own more and more and more. It's like buying into a stock. So first I had to find the right item to use with this method. Basically, I needed to find an item that I expected to go up in the next couple of weeks. If you need help figuring out what items you probably should invest to, check out this video up here, which will be perfect for you helping you to find an item to use for this. It's what I use to find an item for myself. So boom, here's my fire orb spreadsheet. Don't worry. If you don't know how to use spreadsheets like me, there's going to be a link 
in the description for a spreadsheet that you can use for this that will calculate everything for you. You just have to literally fill in what you bought or sold the item for, how many you bought or sold, what price you bought or sold them at, and then it calculates your cost basis for you, your break even point, and how much you totally have now. Huge shout out to Citrine Ghost. He's the Reddit user that made this spreadsheet for all of us. And all you have to do is when you click the link in my description and this opens up, you just need to hit file and make a copy and name it whatever you want. And then this is the copy that you can actually edit. And back to my fire orbs table. Make sure to leave a like if you're enjoying the video so far. So here's what I did. After I realized fire orbs are a good item I should invest to and air orbs as well. So I started buying them. I bought 6,500 at 1,085 gold. So check this out. Like I said, I knew fire orbs would be a good item to invest in. So I started investing them. I started buying them at 1,085. And then the price went down significantly. But usually this would be a red flag. But since I knew the price was going to go back up due to my research, as you can see in my other video, I kept buying into them. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to make more money now. So I kept buying at this 120 mark. And then I saw the price went up to 1,107. So instead of selling all of them, I sold like half. I was at 23K, then I sold 11K at 1,107, and then I had 12K again. But look at my cost basis. It went down significantly. Before I had 6,500 fire orbs that cost me 1,085 each. Now I have 12,500 fire orbs that cost me only 982 each. Now remember, if I would just sold this 23K right here, took out the 1,107 profit, then I'd be done flipping because I sold everything. But I didn't, I kept half of it. So I kept buying, I kept buying, and then boom, it went up to 1,200 gold. So at that point I had 48K, but I took some profit and I sold, 20, I sold 30K of them. And then I was back at 18K again. And then look, the price went down. And so I repeated this process over and over and over. Buy a lot, sell a little bit back. Buy a lot, sell a little bit back. Take some profit margins, but don't take all of it. And then look, by the end, by the end, I owned 133,000 fire orbs. That only cost me 986 gold each. Now let me show you this. I sold them for 1,000. 200 right so we're going to subtract that from 986 we're making 214 gp per fire orb now we're going to multiply that by 133,000. boom keep in mind you made closer to 20 mil because taxes came out and it only took me like two or three weeks to pull this off all right, so this was my ultimate flipping guide. I can't believe it if anyone is actually still here, but thanks so much for watching. Consider leaving a like on this video and dropping a sub. Have a good one. Good luck.